We've come a long, long way together Through the hard times and the good The 1998 Swatch Aloha Wave so Classic was billed from the start as the homecoming. Following an absence of four years, Maui, spiritual home of windsurfing, was about to see the return of professional competition. More important than the $50,000 prize purse was the implicit challenge of the event. Would windsurfing's prodigal sons, the PWA's top sailors, prove themselves against the watermen of Maui, those sailors who have made themselves the alternative celebrities of the sport? Yeah, I'm always happy to see your fellas for a long time. What's the action? See you later, man. Hey, what's up, mate? It's the wife got there. Judgment Day had arrived. With PWA World Championship titles, $50,000 of prize money, and most importantly, self-respect at stake, for once, all the pressure was on the PWA pros. In a gesture of recognition to Maui's special status, the PWA extended its wild card allocation from three to 12 places to allow as many entries as possible from the local fleet. With 40 world-class sailors after just 12 places, the qualifiers gave rise to intense speculation. As Hawaii's natural talents, including three past winners of the event, fought it out in Hukipa's reef break, the qualifiers produced some spectacular displays of sailing. With so many close friends meeting head to head, emotions ran high, as even some of Maui's most respected sailors failed to make the cut. Yeah, real disappointed. I've been working my whole life for this. You know, it kind of sucks when you got to knock each other out head on head in a competition where, you know, there's probably 35 guys in the main event that are kooks. I mean, you guys got the best in the world right here, knocking each other out. So that a whole bunch of guys that silver spooners at all the World Cup that don't know how to sail this place. So you guys are going to have the same five guys that you always have. You're not going to bring any new faces from the place. Maui boys. They sailed their butts off. They all advanced, and they are. We'll go this way. Jason Stone, Josh Angulo, Mark Angulo, Keith Taboo, Rush Randall, Chris Wyman, Sean Aiken, Hisao Nakasato, Kamaguchi, there is David Kalama and Sean Ornez pulling up the end. These 12 guys advancing into the main event, and there is Paul Bryan down there. With the wild cards decided, the final 64 was shaping up to be one of the strongest fleets ever to meet in competition. You gotta think back to the days, you know, like the Mark Angulo, Dave Kalama, Rush Randall, days, you know, when those guys were, you know, they're the guys. And, so now it's going to be interesting to see what there's there's new guys out now and you know match everybody up against each other and kind of have like a little little battle again so it's, it's going to be fun the seating system which draws wild cards against the pwa's top ranking sailors introduced yet more pressure on the pros Mark <laughs> Let's go. in the cage with your Hey. Yeah. We're looking forward to shaking up the, the whole standings a little bit. We know that this is the last event on tour. They didn't even want to let us into the event. And then we get the extra pleasure to go against them the first round. I promise you, I got nothing to lose. And they got everything to lose. And after they piss us off a little more, they might have made us even a little more excited about trying harder. Yeah, and here we got the current leader on the wide writing list, Nick Baker. What's the Paul the big one? Paul Bryan and Nick Baker. Ooh. Now if the conditions, which they're going to do, they're going to get huge. It's going to be 10 to 12 feet in a couple days. And that gets that big, then I'm going to have to say it's going to be one of the local guys. I'm as much local as the locals here. The first time I came here I was 15 years old. I've been spending four or five months ever since, every year, on this island, spring and autumn. So. 
This is probably my second home break off the Pozo, so I know every rock on this beach. It's going to be even. It's going to be good. It's going to be good action. <laughs> and welcome to the final stop of the PWA World Tour. This is the Swatch Aloha Wave Classic, where competitors from 20 countries throughout the world will be competing this week for $50,000 worth of prize money right here at Ho'okipa Beach Park. Despite a strong performance against Bjorn Dunkerbeck, Mark Angulo shed his hard man image and sacrificed a sure step into the next round when he stopped to assist injured sailor Roberto ML. And I was doing good that heat too, so I was kind of like, oh, should I stop and help? I, but you know, you kind of got to help. And advancing on the heat number four, we have winners and they are Bjorn Dunkerbeck and Mark the Hedge Pedersen. You two Bjorn and guys. Mark were sailing really good, so it was, uh, I, I didn't put up much of a fight. I swam more than I sailed. <laughs> For many people, Maui is synonymous with one name above all others. Hey, how's it? This is Aka. You haven't met him yet. Aka boy, come here. Hello. How are you guys? You remember Katie? Stone's place is right across the room. You see the rest of the house? Okay. Uh, got a few old boards up on the roof, some classics. Uh, that's the Koa gun that I used to Jaws a bunch of times. I broke the tail off landing an aerial, so now it's on the roof. Here's my bedroom back here. You're not allowed to come in because I have all sorts uh, of sex see, toys. The first time I came to Maui as a pro was 1981. Um, Aie was like this little ghost town. It was just a few guys and it was really low key and, and I'm sure they felt like pioneers. They were really doing completely new things and now it's very much the spotlight and the focal point for, for windsurfing and, and even a few other sports. But back then the equipment was such that it was almost too windy. And I was riding a, must have been a 10 foot board or at least close to that. I was on a storm sail, it was called in those days. So I didn't have that great an experience, but very shortly thereafter the equipment got smaller and the boards got better and we suddenly dialed into those conditions a lot better and uh, loved it after that. You're so. amazed if it starts. <laughs> when it runs but I don't think we'll run it today in the rain so we'll have to see you guys maybe next time take it easy Every time there's a big swell, I'm always out here for sure. And uh, that's one of those things that it does help out. It does pay out in confidence because the bigger it gets, 
the better it feels for me. The more I know I can hit it. Sean Aiken, you advance. Sean Aiken, you advance. And USA 6. Josh Six zero. Keep the T man to duel. You advance. Yes. Keep the duel. You advance. And US nine three three. Kevin yeah. Pritchard still in the thick of things. Kevin Pritchard, you advance. Well, uh, I know I did what I could out there. Obviously, I didn't advance. I just hear the results uh, a little bit bummed, but that's all right. There's a lot more to come. Maui is the promised land for many young windsurfers. But getting there is only part of the journey. Here's my younger brother Lalo and beautiful wife Tamara. And uh, we're coming uh, after a great day of sailing and surfing. We're just having some cereal, the usual. If you come into my house, no problem, you shower right here. No neighbors to look at you. Oh, yeah. Back up. <laughs> you can shower and then uh, you all, you won't be sleeping with us the first night. Maybe later in the week, but uh, then we set you up with a, a sofa here. You go outside and it's a sprinkles middle right there. I I came here. I came from Argentina. I was uh, 17 years old and um, I land here with my backpack and watching the final of the O'Neill. I was uh, in 89 or something, and uh, it was a little bit of a sad beginning because uh, it was my, like my dream kind of vanishing away. No, no chance, these guys are unreal. They're like so good. And uh, I don't know, I just decided to stay. And it went through, but definitely my first memory was like just crying, really, thinking that I lost my dream. So I, I spent three months here. I went back home for Christmas and all that. and. Uh, Spent like three weeks there thinking, what do I do? And I say, oh, just, just go do it. Go for your dreams. There's only one life to live. And uh, so I came here in Maui, and that basically when I started making Maui my home. Woo! Maui 
Malawi is the place where I I think I went from boy to a little bit grown up boy. I got in contact with um, more of myself. I found uh, my wife and um, I got in contact with uh, a lot of people that influenced my life a lot. I don't know, it just really, it's, a, it's definitely a place that really uh, changed anybody's life. It could change anybody's life. Low pressure continued to build and the race director pushed on with the contest. After a further eight heats, the fleet had been halved once more, with now only four wild cards remaining in the final 16. I've done a little bit better in other competitions, but this is the most fun I've had, so it's still, it's not bad to lose to Nash, you know. Regardless of reputation, all watermen who sail the shores of Maui have to respect the unwritten rules of wave riding. Hey, what's up, man? Come in. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in ages. You, you haven't been here before, I've I'll show you around. House is pretty messy. You sort of, we're not, we don't live as lavishly as the other guys, so uh, this is my bedroom. Um, pretty small. It's got a little TV there. Big bed. Lots of room. I'll just see if Nick's home. Oh, he's, he's here. Uh, Nick and Ant's room. Actually, it's Nick's room. Ant, Ant lives downstairs. Hi, guys. 
Oh, this, this is like the trophy, little trophy area we got here. Oh, by the way, this is Ant's room. Uh, in here. That's, uh, that's Trisha, and it's girlfriend. As soon as I arrived, um, I had a few days at Spreckelsville uh, when I was a youngster, and then I pretty much went straight up to her keeper. Basically, the rules at her keeper are is that um, if there's more than 10 surfers out in the lineup, then you really can't go out until um, I think it's after 11 a.m. And then after 11 a.m., you can sort of you know, venture out there, and, um, but you've got to stay clear of the surfers. You know, if they're paddling the wave, just sort of peel off the back and try and get another one. A lot of the, um, the older type surfers that uh, are locals here and are well respected that do surf who keep her over morning and things like that, you do have to stay out of their way. So a couple of times I've seen some people um, get in trouble um, with some surfers that have done the wrong thing. Um, but myself I haven't really been in, in uh, any trouble. I landed on, on a few windsurfers when I was younger and got in trouble, but the local surfers I haven't really had too many problems with. You get a bit of abuse from them, but generally you know, they know who you are and you know, they're pretty cool. I'm meant to be down at uh, Hukeeper pretty soon, so uh, I've, got, I've got to blast off. I'll see you later. When the swell reaches epic proportions, Hokipa Beach closes out and localized look for the monster of Maui, Jaws. Experiencing Jaws, the wave is going at least two to three times quicker than any wave around the North Shore. So to be able just to catch the wave, you've got to be going full speed to even get in on the wave. And when the wave hits that reef, the wave is just unbelievable. It sucks you off the face in the bottom turn and it spits you out off the top. The pineapple plantations of the North Shore were awash with competition spectators, offered a rare opportunity to witness the awesome skills of Maui's watermen firsthand.
the winners are Brindal and Paul Bryan. The wild card advances to face Kalama and Dunker Beck. Jason Polakow, you advance. And USA 6, Woo! Josh Stone. Richard, you advance. Richard and Nash. Number 31, and next on the water, they are Polakow and Pritchard. Polakow and Pritchard. On the water, next. Lead number 31. wasn't my best heat, but I think some of the other guys were experiencing some of the hardships I was too, so it's going to be more of a case who, who didn't do the worst rather than who did the best, I think. Polakow and Pritchard, Kalama and Bringdahl advanced. I'm too old for this, my friend, I'm too old. While Hukipa remains the playground of windsurfing's elite, for some, Jaws has become the ultimate testing ground. This is what I do. I go sail out there. When I come home, I'll trash. I sit down at this sofa. I look at that TV. I put my feet on the table. I'll be obnoxious to my girlfriend. I drink beers. It's fantastic. It's a pretty good lifestyle. <laughs> 
right now I'm really drawn towards the big wave riding, toe and surfing on huge waves and stuff like that. And there's not a lot of places in the world where you get that big of a waves as you get here in Hawaii. I think the best moment for me was when I, I sailed Jost the first time and um, it's a few years back now and we're down at uh, the beach in Okipa checking out the conditions and it was uh, definitely large and eventually Robbie goes Let, let's go let's go sail Jost and um, it's the first time ever out there right? so I'm scared out of my my brains and um, I'm looking at these waves and they, they were they were pretty seriously they were monsters I mean we didn't know how big they were until we got out there the first wave, I thought I'd take a smaller one, you know, and I'd just drop into the shoulder and drive away. And the photo I got out of the first wave is a, almost a four times mass high wave that I just dropped in on the side. Now, photogenically, it looked like I was ripping all over the place, but the fact is I was a shoulder soldier on the side of the thing, which was, you know, all I wanted to do, and I was quite content with that. And uh, I was about to drop into one wave. Robin Nash hops into the wave just in front of me. I let the second one go, and the third one is mine, and I'm, I'm there. I had no idea where the channel was, and I took one look on this well. And it's the first time in my life I sheeted out on the wave and said, forget it, I'm not into that one, it's not even funny. You know, it's a, kind of like one of those feelings where you conquer something that you're kind of scared of at the same time. So uh, for me, it's a really strong, uh, you know, strong memories. And I got my little photo on the wall from it too, so I was happy. Be good, and if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. See you guys later. Hey, this is Willie Nelson. Hello from Hokipa. Women's windsurfing has seen a recent resurgence, and new talent from Europe and the Americas swarm to Maui to prove themselves in the big waves. A number of strong Maui locals also turned out to pit themselves against the best in the world in the strongest women's fleet the sport has seen for years. Sends me out in the street where I came from, turn around but it looks so great. Children running, jumping, screaming, laughing, so spotful in my face. What a warning, nothing I've seen yet, I'll try but I can't escape. All these things that I don't remember but with the names reaching through my head I remember All the pain Don't surrender Looking on the dog in the driving rain Sounds like you Sadly, the predicted Kona winds blew, bringing heavy cloud cover and unsettled weather. After only 45 minutes of women's competition, the wind dropped away as quickly as it had arrived, leaving a desperate scene on the rocks and shattering any hopes of finishing the women's event. We were not really lucky with the wind and that's just how it goes. And I mean, we ran out of time in the end, just, just a couple more heats and we would have had something, so it was really bad luck. Maui is a culture shock. Wherever you come from, to make your home here demands an extremely well-developed sense of identity. Okay, this is 
my wife, right there. All the slalom board here, all the wave board. We have to be organized because uh, <laughs> we always fly, come back like one week, two weeks, and then fly again. So, so most of the time you're looking for all your stuff. Where's my boom? Where's the mass and everything? So when you organize, it's much better. My first memory when I arrived in the airport in Maui it was really small. It was a really small plane. And then uh, when we come over here, we have like one, two board, couple of cells, and the airport was so small. The tidy I like much better. The, um, well, it's still Polynesian, same, same kind like here, but um, the culture is pretty strong and uh, everyone speaks Tahitian, Polynesian. But here, not, not so many people speak Hawaiian anymore. Since I am here, I speak like two or three times with all people, like 70 years old, but all the rest, all the, the young, young guys is totally forget. I mean, the culture is almost gone. And Tahiti is still powerful. It's in school and, and radio and TV and oh, everyone is tattooed all over, paddle canoe and beautiful. When you go somewhere, you have to live like those people, the way you live. You cannot put your own role and everything. You have to live like them and, and, uh, and everything is perfect. Harmony. Everything keeps going and it's perfect. Thank you very much to come uh, and you come anytime. In Tahiti we say my house is yours, yours is mine. Okay, so anytime, welcome. Down to the last four, Ringdahl, Kalama, Pritchard, and Polakow, whose semi-final warm-up didn't go quite according to plan. I sort of tried to do a bit of a smash off the lip there on a quite a big wave, and I just couldn't pull it together. And I think when I went down, I smacked my head on the board quite hard. After receiving medical attention, Polakow sailed out to face the young American Kevin Pritchard in the first of the man-on-man -man semis. last heat. Listen up, here it is. It's the Hawaiian David Kalama. US 212, David Kalama. I think that you are definitely not a true world champion unless you can come to Maui and beat the boys. People really will not give you the respect that you might think you deserve if you don't come here and, and sail good. And you've got to sail good to win here. After two restless days, the wind filled in just long enough to allow the final everyone had been waiting for, Palakau versus Kalama. Conditions look kind of tricky, you know, it's a little bit onshore and bumpy, so if I can stay in one piece throughout the heat, you know, that's all I'm really hoping for. It's, it's kind of nasty out there. Jason's going to smoke him. Jason's on fire today. Jason Polakoff is one of the sickest men out there. And who keep on, you know, as you know, David Kalama is a water man. And he can do anything. He's capable of doing anything. Both the thighs are crazy in the head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know. Who do you think's going to get it? Uh, the Aussie. <laughs> Got to say the Aussie. Probably Jace, I'd say. 
a little more uh, flash. But uh, Dave's definitely got, you know, the local knowledge for sure, and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Jason you know, I haven't done a big contest in here in Hawaii for five years, so it was really good the first big one to win after so long, so I'm really happy.
<laughs> Maui. <laughs> Fuck. I always wanted to make a surfing film, you know, ever since I saw the early Bud Brown films in Australia. If you had the opportunity to do whatever you wanted to do, what would you, what would you like to do? And I said, I'd like to make a really beautiful, positive film about the world. That's what I'd like to do. Local law enforcement officials warn, if you see this man, do not approach him. It is thought that he may be a windsurfer. Hello, children. Today, Uncle Robert has some letters. Ring, ding, ring. Yeah! Toys, toys, toys. <laughs> Vulcan, the Willy Skipper, the Fish Eye. Windsurfing is so cool that people don't even know it's cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 